What's up everybody, welcome in and thanks for tuning in to another Masterverse video. Today we're going to be taking a look at Masters of the Universe Revelation version King Grayskull. As you'll know, this is not the King Grayskull from the comic, this is not the King Grayskull from the 2000 version of Masters of the Universe. This is actually a Netflix King Grayskull um, interpretation from the Revelation cartoon. So he is different. And we will go over that in a little bit. Uh, as we take a look at the box, go ahead and spin it around to the side. It is a long deluxe box. I'm not sure why you don't get a whole lot in the package. But we do get a really good picture of the king here on the side of the box. As we spin it around to this side of the box, we've got an even cooler picture of King Grayskull separating the power swords. It says King Grayskull, heroic ancestor of He-Man. Since the dawn of Eternia, there has always been a hero to protect the planet's sacred magic. The first of those heroes, and the first to hold the mantle of He-Man, was King Grayskull. Now resting alongside the other heroes in Preternia, King Grayskull holds the key for adventures to return to Eternia to save the magic from vanishing into oblivion. And then also in the wave, we've got Savage, He-Man, King Grayskull, Tila, Andra, Trapjaw, Merman, and Stinkor. I believe we have all of these reviews up on the channel currently, except for this Andra and this Merman. We have the Merman 2.0, but we did not get to this Merman yet. So I will have to go back in time and get him off the shelf uh, and do that video. I am kind of doing some videos of older figures now because I tried to get the newer ones done when I started doing the channel, but I still already had some older figures. So I kind of want to go ahead and get the videos up on those just so you guys get my thoughts and interpretations on these characters. So we've taken a look at the box. This side of the box just says King Grayskull. So heroic ancestor of He-Man. Um, so there he is. We're going to go ahead and get him pulled out of the box and take a closer look. So even these larger Masterverse Deluxe, excuse me, Deluxe boxes, they still only put a single piece of tape on it right here in the middle. I feel like that was one of the biggest flaws of these boxes, of the packaging. Um, the, the piece of tape here, you couldn't really tell. I mean, if you bought these secondhand, because I did end up getting a couple off of Marketplace, um, but you couldn't really tell whether that was the original tape or whether someone just kind of retaped it. You had to just kind of take their word for it, especially if it was a figure that, you know, didn't have many bands on the arms or the wrists. So we got him busted open. Let's go ahead and get him pulled out. So there is King Grayskull pulled out of the package. Looking pretty cool. We got two swords, we got some extra hands, a shield, and then an extra head up here, which I'm going to say is a good thing because I'm not really a big fan of this snarling face here. We'll take a closer look at all of that. Let's go ahead and get him popped out of here. Let's start with the extra hand. Looks like the sword is banded. It feels like he does have a wire cape. He's got bands through the cape. This character is something else. Yeah, I can't believe they have the cape banded down like this. Now we're just slamming bands through the there, little shivs of plastic. Let's get all these picked out of the cape here. As best we can anyway. Uh, I believe his hair should probably tuck down in, but... I think this is going to just pull up over his shoulders the same way that Keldor's did. Maybe something like that. And then we can bend these wires. 
around to make the cape look a little cooler maybe we'll have to mess with this because maybe maybe his hair is going to have to go on the inside let's just shove his hair down on the inside and see if that helps because i feel like these are supposed to slide up the straps there's that wire in the cape i'm not sure i'm not sure what to make of this I thought he looked cool in the box. Uh, not so much of a fan now that I'm getting him out. I really wasn't anticipating struggling with this cape so much. I feel like it just looks funny. So let's just get him post up real quick and we'll go over his accessories and talk some more about him. All right. So there's King Grayskull. He can't really look up any more than that because of the hair on top of the fur, on top of, all, you know, all, all of that stuff. It's kind of forcing his head to look down just because all of this. And I tried to put his ponytail under here and that didn't really work right either. I felt like that looked even weirder than this does. So we're going to fiddle around with him a little bit get some accessories in his hands because I, I just can't imagine that this is what he's supposed to look like. Um, I could be totally wrong, but that's that's a really bad um, a really bad way of putting that on there. So I'm hoping it's just from the box. I'm going to go ahead and fiddle with him a little bit, get him set up with some accessories, and then we'll take a closer look. All right, so the first thing I did was go ahead and swap out heads. So we'll go ahead and take a closer look at this head. And you can kind of see the way that the hair here is just, look at that. I mean, and I, you try to bend it down and it, it just doesn't. So it just bulks him out. Like there's no need for this to stick out this far. This hair should be coming down something like that. Uh, kind of like old King Grey Skull from the Classics line. And, you know, they did the character once already. All they had to do was redo him like they did all of these other people. But we've got these big swooping hair. Um, I feel like his chest harness is a little cheaper. I thought that it looked a lot better uh, in the package than it actually looks on him. It's one of the kind of like wave one He-Man uh, from that first, or I don't happen to have one sitting here, but that first edition of He-Man that we got, just the really thin rubber, it's just reminiscent of that. The logo in the center is correct, uh, as far as I can remember from the show and the introduction of King Gray Skull. The symbol is correct in the center there. And then he did come with two additional hands. We have a left hand slapper, so you can place his shield if you would like to and then we've got a fister in case you need to punch somebody so got a couple different hand options i am going to go ahead and use the two grabber hands because i like him with both power swords that was a pretty iconic uh look for me here with the two power swords um again i do prefer this face over this face let's go ahead and get a a good look at this face and then we will go ahead and his head won't tilt back so much. I do apologize for that. So there we'll get as good a look at this face as we can. And this hair did go down behind the fur and it just seemed to work out better as far as that goes. Um, and it's kind of bad because I'm, I'm looking at this character in hindsight in a way. This was one of the earlier characters that we got. Uh, he wasn't uh, we're, we're far into New Eternia now, and they've definitely made some improvements on the designs and things. So I don't want to be too hard on this guy because he was an early version of the Masterverse character. He doesn't kind of really represent what we have today. A lot of things are still similar, but there, there have been some updates and some changes. So I'm not going to be too hard on him for that. I do not understand the race swap. I don't understand why they do that in any situation. It doesn't really make sense to me. I know he's not a real historical person, but he is a real historical character who a background story and a timeline, you know, everything has been developed for him. So to go ahead and just change his whole race makes it seem a little bit off, a little bit weird, and a little bit intentional, and I don't think anyone was happy with it. From the people that I've talked to, and I've got friends all over the place, I'm in some Motu groups, 
nobody was happy with the race swap. No matter what your race was, you you felt like this was unnecessary. Now, there may be some new kids, whatever, who had no idea who King Grayskull was to begin with, and that's probably totally cool for them because they've got this awesome figure, but they could have made an awesome figure and just not called him King Grayskull, who was already somebody else. I guess that's my complaint, is he was already somebody else. Now we've made him into someone different. So, just weird as, as far as that goes for me, but... The rant on that's over. I don't I don't agree with it in any situation. So anyways, let's move on to his articulation. Let's go ahead and put his arms down just so we can get to his head a little better. Now with this hair, he can not look left. He can not look to the right. He's got the hair blocking it here. It's kind of limiting his head. So he doesn't look to the left or right that much. You can interchange the heads. He does look down very well. Um, you can position it up and then kind of angle his diaphragm cut here in the center back. And that will give him a more looking up uh, look. But then his hair just kind of hangs off of his chest here, which goes into what I was talking about earlier. There was no reason for that, but they did it anyway. Just make the hair stick out instead of laying flush against his chest because that's what people's hair do. It, it just sticks out. As far as his arms, uh, we can go up all the way. We do have a bicep swivel that rotates 300 degrees. The shoulder will also rotate 300 degrees. 360 degrees, we do have the double jointed elbow and the king's double jointed elbow. There it's pretty, pretty stiff, but we did get it to bend out there. His wrist will rotate 360 degrees as well as pivot. It will pivot backwards and it will pivot forwards. Move on to this diaphragm cut we were talking about earlier. He can crunch forward. He can crunch back. He can crunch to the left and he can crunch to the right. So pretty, pretty awesome figure. Um, I love this figure. I think the face sculpt looks good. I think everything looks good about this figure. He's got one of my favorite belts and loincloths. I love the boots, the details on the boots. Um, the power swords, you know, they're not the 80s style uh, vintage power swords that I'm used to seeing, but I do like them. They, they do come from the Revolution series. They're kind of designed there. And I really enjoyed the uh, Masters of the Universe Revolutions cartoon. So if that's something that you're into or maybe you haven't seen or heard of the new cartoon, I would definitely recommend going and checking that out. You'll get the backstory of King Skull and several other of the figures. We're going to go ahead and pull some other guys in to do some comparisons real quick. And we'll be right back. All right, so I just brought in He-Man for a comparison, and he is kind of a kit bash He-Man all over the place. But just for size and scale, you'll be able to see what I was talking about. Um, basically, it is the exact same body that we've been getting the entire time, arms, legs, everything like that. This new attorney of He-Man does have a different torso, a little bit bigger chest, as well as neck muscles. Um, I did switch things up a little bit, though. This is the new attorney of Battle Armor He-Man. Only I took the battle armor off and just put on his cross harness. And then he is wearing a um, Motu Origins He-Man head on top of that. Just because I felt like it worked best for creating uh, He-Man. I do have another He-Man head, but that was more vintage style. But the skin color was a little bit off. This skin color matched really well. And I felt like it did really good creating this version of He-Man. Um, and then, so here we see He-Man compared with his ancestor, uh, and it could be just, it's probably, see, we can't do a direct comparison because I swapped the heads, but see how much skinnier King Grayskull's head is than the, than the Origins head that I have on He-Man here. It's, it's a completely, uh, tiny head compared to the Origins, and that's another reason why I switched to the Origins head. I just feel like they fit the body better. So... We did get an Origins version of King Grayskull. I did not pick him up. Um, I believe you had to order new... No, man, it is totally, totally slipping my mind. Okay, so after this long pause... Eternia? I don't, is it just called Eternia? The Eternia playset? 
I can't remember, guys, and, and that's horrible. I'm just drawing a complete blank right now. But that was the comparison with He-Man. I thought that I had a 7-inch female character, but all I have as far as female characters right now is a cartoon collection Tila. And as you can see, she does not scale properly with him at all. She's way too short. So I thought that I had my other Tila down here to do a female Masterverse comparison, but I must have taken her somewhere else. So... We will just compare him with that He-Man, and now back to standard old King Grayskull here. So as we go back to a little bit more about his accessories, um, I did end up not hating the cape. I don't love the cape, that's for sure, but I don't hate the cape. I still can't figure out how exactly it looks best on him, or if it even looks best on him. I kind of like it pulled up. But then I don't like it too bumpy up around his head. Really weird about that. I do like that they put a wire in the cape. However, the wire should have went clear up to here. So we don't have this bulge pushing up on this. Which already makes it look funny in his back anyway. So, unfortunately a lot of misses with this figure. When it comes to things that they could have done and they could have done really well. We know that this idea works because they did it on the new King Keldor figure and it, it came out really well. But then they left the wires out of King Keldor's cape. So it's like they fixed the ruffly part. They forgot the wires. It, it seems like it would have been a nice thing to just put the two best things of each together to create Keldor's cape. Obviously he came later. So this maybe was a learning thing here with this one. About the swords, you cannot hook them together. Um, that would have been a cool option if you could have reassembled the swords in some way, or if it would have just came with one sword that was the two merged together, but maybe still kind of showing some color variation. I guess the last thing to show here is his shield, which is another take on the He-Man shield. I really like it. Again, I think this is a really good character. I think that they did a really good job on his accessories, other than I wish that his harness would have just been a little bit beefier. It just is very thin here. And then as far as the cape, I wish they would have just made the cape slide up over his shoulders and fit around his head just a little bit better. The hair maybe make it a little bit more pliable so that it's not just sticking up off of his chest because I felt like that was kind of weird as well. Let me know what you guys think. What are your thoughts, opinions on King Grayskull here? Do you like the new Revelation version of King Grayskull or do you prefer the Classics version of King Grayskull? Either way, I think he's a cool figure as far as adding to the Masterverse universe. He looks great. He fits right in. He definitely looks like a barbarian warrior king, so I love it. He fits right in with my He-Man, and I'd be happy to get him displayed up on the shelf. He's been sitting in the box for a long time, so it's cool to finally get him out. And as I said, I will be displaying him with this head versus this head. I'm just not a big fan of of the facial sculpt on this one i feel like it missed a couple things and this definitely appears to be a better head sculpt for me so if you would hit that like button subscribe to the channel turn your notifications on stay tuned to all the upcoming videos we'll see you in the next one